Okay, so we're going to look at uh, Shamir Secret Shares and then we're going to apply that into the world of elliptic curves and hopefully we'll be able to implement this within uh, Golang. So it was Audi Shamir who came up with the concept of perfect secret sharing. So is it possible for Bob, Trent, Eve and Alice to share a secret? And where we split the secret into a number of shares and then in an all or nothing scheme we only if we can bring back the shares together can we rebuild the secret and for this he, he proposed a secret sharing scheme and in this case it's an all or nothing all or nothing so we need to bring all the shares back together to give us our secret if we only have three of the shares, then it's not possible to get the secret back again. But what we can also do, and what he proposed, was that we can build in resilience. In this case, we could go from an any three from four. So, for example, Alice may go offline and not be available. So is it possible for Bob, Trent and Eve to bring back their shares together to create the secret? And for that, we have a T from N, where T is the threshold and N is the number of shares. With this, if we have a T minus one shares, then it's not possible to rebuild the secret. And we need at least T shares to be able to regenerate it. In this case, we can build in resilience into our data. And this is especially useful when we take an encryption key and we might split it into three elements share one share two and share three and then we could define a two from three so for example if we wanted to regenerate the key we might store the shares in three different places and then we could go to two different places and to be able to rebuild the key so the shamir secret share system allows us to be able to define an all or nothing or a certain policy to rebuild the shares back again. So the method that's proposed is to define a, an, an equation or a polynomial as we would normally define it that will map uh, the secret onto the polynomial and only by knowing a certain number of points can you actually reveal the secret. And the secret is the place at which the polynomial cuts the y-axis or when x is equal to zero. In the simplest case we might just have two shares and the secret that we want to, to store in this case is four. And with two we can actually just draw a straight line. Bob is given the point at x1 which is 1 7 and Alice is given to 10. The point at 2 and 10. This relates to the straight line 3x plus 4. With only one of the points it is not possible to determine the gradient of that line at all and only when we have a second point that Alice will reveal to us can we actually discover the straight line. Once we discover the straight line as you should all know it's very simple for us to create the value of c from that the point where we cut the y-axis or at x equals zero. So if we define this as f of x then this is f of two and this is f of f of one and the point that we want is f of zero. Let's try a two from three scheme now. With this we still have the same secret that we want Bob, Alice and Carol to uh, share. So Bob takes the first point, Alice takes the second point, and Carol takes the third point. We can't see 313, but it's up there somewhere. Now, if Bob and Alice come together, they can create the straight line. If Bob and Carol get together, again, they can do it. And when Alice and Carol get together, they can discover the secret. So now we have a two from three scheme. If we want to go higher now, in that we now go for a 4 and we take a 3 from 4, we now need to use a quadratic equation. And if you remember, a quadratic equation looks like 
this, that's the curve there, the red one there, that's what a quadratic equation looks like, and the point at which x equals 0 is this point here. So this becomes our secret, our secret point. And we hope that when we get three of the points together, we'll be able to rediscover that secret. So in this case, we'll take uh, our equation of our quadratic equation, 2x squared minus 2x plus 3, where 3 is the secret. Bob takes the value at 1, Carol at 2, Dave at 3, and Alice at 4. And now, with two points, it is not possible for us to rediscover the, uh, the quadratic equation because it would only be a linear equation here. But now when Dave comes in and Dave gives the third point, it is now possible for us to be able to discover the quadratic equation which relates to those three points. And it can be any three points. It can be Bob, Carol and Alice getting together. We can still define the quadratic equation again uh, and uh, we can discover what the secret actually is. So in this way we can actually create quite complex uh, curves and we can fit our polynomial. And basically what we have is a polynomial p of x is uh, p0 plus p1 x plus p2 x squared and so on. This is the secret here. And then what we do is that the first share becomes P1. We substitute 1 into the polynomial. P2 becomes the second share and so on. And when we rediscover the polynomial, we take the first coefficient, P0, and we have our secret back again. It's a really magical scheme and it works extremely uh, well. Okay, so that shows an example of the quadratic equation. If we want to do a 4 from 5 and so on, we would get uh, x to the power of 3 and, and so on. The methods that we use uh, to be able to do this is to be able to do a, a, a polynomial curve fitting to be able to reverse back the points to the, uh, to the, 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 the polynomial. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, the secret's 10, and we're using this curve here, 20x squared minus 19 plus 10. So our secret is 10. So Bob takes the first point, so that's 1, so that's 20 minus 19 plus 10, which is 11. Okay, so he gets 1, 11. Uh, Carol takes 2, and she calculates 52, or she will get 52. So then we will then of these four uh, shares there. Okay, so with these shares, we need to make sure that we store the x value because we might get the shares in a different order. So when we're storing the share, we store one and then the actual value or the y value at that point. And this way we can get the shares in at any point and to be able to rebuild them back again. The last thing we want to do is to put that point there and that point there. We wouldn't get the right curve. So whenever we get the points back, we need to actually record or we need to store them with the x value that relates to the point so that we can put them back in order. Uh, even though we might be missing one, we can still put them back and recover uh, the curve and reveal the secret. So in this case, we've got a very simple Python program. Basically, it's representing our secret as a polynomial. Uh, there's the A and the B value, the A and the B value here, and the C value is our secret here. Uh, this Python library with NumPy allows us to be able to represent that as a polynomial value. 20 minus 19 and 10 is our polynomial. That's the secret, the secret polynomial that we want to store. Okay, so uh, basically here, we're rebuilding three shares back again. And there's our x values. And then we do a polynomial fit from there. In this case, it's taking the three points that we have and then doing a fit. And we end up 
with our secret polynomial, which is the 20 minus 1910. And if we reveal the uh, the last or the, the this element here, we can actually reveal back the secret. So it's really wonderful. It's a wonderful uh, uh, method that uh, has been uh, defined. And, but these days we typically use elliptic curves now. So elliptic curves are good because we have points on an elliptic curve and we can tell, we can create very simple operations on them. To keep it simple, I'll just explain what an elliptic curve is. We have a base point, we have an equation which defines the elliptic curve. Uh, so I won't go into any great detail, but we've got something like uh, x squared is equal to x cubed plus uh, ax plus b and there's a mod of a prime number in there. It's called a finite field and rather than a curve we end up with a whole lot of dots. But uh, we'll just ignore that just now and just look at our, our basic curve. So on the curve we have a base point which is an xy point on the curve. We then create operations, very simple operations such as a double or an add. For that we end up with a point on the curve when we add g so many times, a times in this case, we end up with a point on the elliptic curve a g, which is basically g added to itself a times uh, to give us that. So we represent it as a multiplication because it's kind of like that, but it's really just a point addition that we have or a point doubling uh, as in the method. This is normally known as a public value, so we can expose that value and it is not possible for us to discover the value of a, even though we know the value of g, the base point, and a g. So what we'll have is that we'll take a message, and what we do is we hash that message onto uh, the, the curve, and that becomes our secret, uh, sg in this case. So this is our point that we want to be able to uh, save, and then what we do is that we then will do our polynomial uh, about, uh, uh, processing to be able to create a number of points based on, on this. This will be P1, P2, and P3. And we record it as 1, 2, and, th and 3, and, and so on, on the x-axis. So we take our secret, and then we can split it into our shares, as we've done before. And then we can define from each of these shares what the policy is to be able to rebuild it back again. And when we build it back, we should be able to discover back the value of SG, which is the hidden point or the secret point, which can only be rebuilt with these polynomial shares. So let's see how this is implemented in Golang. The curve we're using is curve 25519. It's an Edwards twist curve. It's a very fast and efficient and secure uh, curve. We'll then create our Shamir scheme with a screen, scheme with a T from N with this curve, and then we'll split the shares up. One thing to notice when we display the shares is that we can see one, two, three. These relate to the X points or are related to the polynomial. And then after that, we get the share value or the, the y point for p1, p2, p3 and so on. Then we'll create our secret uh, here and in this case we're hashing it into a scalar value. Uh, the scalar value is a, as a multiplier that we would have on our curve. After this we'll split our shares up and then we'll combine them. So in the first case, we're taking each of the shares and obviously we should be able to rebuild them back from there. But then in this case, when we try to rebuild from just one share, then we cannot rebuild the, uh, the, the secret share. In uh, Golang, we can rec return an error value. If the return value is not a null, it means that that, uh, uh, that uh, a piece of code has not been successful. So we'll just have a look at the code running and we'll just find it here. Okay, so here's a very simple demonstrator. We'll go from a two from three and we'll hash hello. 
So I can see here that it's worked, but only with one share it hasn't worked, but with two shares it has, because we have a two from three. If I now try from a two from four, a three from four, sorry, a three from four, we can see that with two shares, we can't recover the value uh, again. Okay, and we can go quite complex schemes, like a three from seven or a three from 10. You can see here that we've marked each of the shares with its X value so that we can rebuild them back again as we want. And this is the point on the Y axis for that, for that share. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at the running code. So here's the code here in, in Golang. We're using the cryptology uh, a library from Coinbase. It's a fairly new library. And we're using the Shamir uh, method there. We split the shares. Um, this is our secret. And then we combine them back and we'll check to see if our secret is correct. Okay, so in Golang, we just build and then we'll run and we'll give an argument of one, two, three, and we'll go for a policy of any two from three. So you can see here it's worked with two shares. So now we'll do it again, but we'll go from any, any three from four. And you should see that it doesn't work here. Uh, so this is the, the, the error that comes back and, uh, we check that to see if it's been possible to be able to combine the shares from there. Okay, so that's the setup that we have with uh, with Golang. And uh, so hopefully that's explained as Shamir Secret Shares. Uh, as I said, it's an excellent uh, method for splitting up encryption keys. Uh, maybe you want to back up your encryption key and you might store it in three places and only when two of these entities come back uh, can you re-discover uh, uh, the encryption key. But you can also do it with data and where you can split data into different shares and again only when it comes back uh, uh, together uh, will we be able to reveal the data. Okay, thank you.